hello guys welcome to mat 10 in this video i am going to introduce you to the anterior abdominal wall and discuss about the layers present in it so if you are going to stick with me for the next few minutes i am going to make sure that you get get the most so coming to the anterior abdominal wall i'll drawing the abdomen like this so the anterior abdominal wall is the musculo aponeurotic structure confined to the anterior and lateral aspects of the abdomen first of all anterior abdominal wall is bounded by the exified fossas and the right and the left costal margins the 12th rib on the either side and the exified fossas here this is the upper margin and the lower margin is by the anterior superior iliac spine of the hip joint to the pubic tubercle this inguinal ligament this is the region of anterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall right why do we need to study the anterior abdominal wall because the physical examination of the abdomen is mostly performed through the anterior abdominal wall and we also can access to the abdomen and its contents for any surgery through the incisions in the anterior abdominal wall right and there may occur abdominal hernias which mostly occur through the anterior abdominal wall the next we are going to discuss about the surface landmarks so this is the anterior abdominal wall i told you this is the exified fossas the costal margin this is the hip okay and then we have a umbilicus here and just above the umbilicus this is the subcostal pain subcostal plane which is nothing but a plane passing through the inferior edge of the 12th costal rib 12th costal rib and then we have another plane called as the transpyloric plane somewhere here this is the transpyloric plane transpyloric plane it is nothing but as a horizontal plane passing through the ninth costal rib we have two important planes here transpyloric plane and the subcostal plane and this is the umbilical plane umbilical plane is nothing but as which passes through the umbilicus and then we have another plane called as the transtubercular plane which and this is trans tubercular plane because it passes through the tubercle of the iliac crest tubercle of the iliac crest trans tubercular plane trans umbilical plane we have the subcostal plane and the trans pyloric plane so these are the main four planes that divide the anterior abdominal wall coming to the soft tissue landmarks i'm going to draw the abdomen so this is the lateral edge of the body this is the 12th costal rib this is the zifford process this is the umbilicus this is the anterior superior iliac spine of the hip now i'm going to draw so what is this this is the zifford process costal margin umbilicus anterior superior iliac spine of the hip and this was the pubic tubercle this is nothing but as the inguinal ligament inguinal ligament right so coming to soft tissue landmarks there is one important thing that you have to remember is connecting to the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine this line is known as the mcburney's line mcburney's line and a point two third of the medial and lateral one third this point is known as the mcburney's point mcburney's point what do we have in the mcburney's point it is the junction of medial two third and lateral one third of the line extending from umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine so in mcburney's point what is formed appendix is formed the 
McBurney is point. Then we have a spermatic cord right here below the tubercle. This is the spermatic cord. This is McBurney's point, inguinal ligament. We have the McBurney's line. This is the anterior superior spine. And you can find some insertions here. These are known as the tendinous insertion intersections. They are somewhere you will find the liver like this. This is the liver and here you can find the fundus of the gallbladder so these are the soft tissue landmarks that you might want to remember coming to an important abdominal plane which is known as the transpyloric plane now we are going to discuss about the transpyloric plane why this plane makes so special is because i am going to tell it now it is an imaginary horizontal plane which passes through the tips of nine coastal cartilage. It is key plane of the abdomen. Key plane of abdomen. Because there are a lot of abdominal viscera that passes through this plane. Firstly, the pylorus of the stomach. Pylorus of stomach. It transects the pylorus of stomach. Second thing is also it transfers the fundus of stomach. Third thing is the it transects the neck of pancreas. Neck of pancreas. Fourth thing is the it transects the hyla of kidneys. Fifth thing is the it transects the origin of superior mesenteric artery which is nothing but as SMA it also transects the formation of portal vein portal vein and the last one is that it transects the root of transverse mesocolon root of transverse mesocolon so these are all the structures that are transpyloric plane transects. So it is considered as the key plane of the anterior abdominal wall. So now that we have discussed about the anterior abdominal wall, bony landmarks and soft tissues. Now we are going to going to learn about layers of the anterior abdominal wall. Layers of anterior abdominal wall. So what are all those layers we are going to learn? We will see it now. The first thing is the first what comes? Skin right? Skin. Just below the skin we have superficial fascia. Below the superficial fascia we have external oblique muscle. external oblique muscle and below the external oblique we have internal oblique muscle internal oblique muscle below the internal oblique muscle we have transversus abdominis transversus abdominis muscle Below the transversus abdominis muscle, we have fascia transversalis. Fascia transversalis. Below the fascia transversalis, we have the extra peritoneal tissue. Extra peritoneal tissue. And the last thing is the parietal layer of peritoneum. Parietal layer of peritoneum. So, what are the all the layers of the anterior abdominal wall? Skin, superficial fascia, external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominis muscle, fascia transversalis, extra peritoneal tissue, and the parietal layer of the peritoneum. We are going to discuss them one by one. Firstly, coming to the skin. 
the skin of the anterior abdominal wall is thinner and more sensitive than the skin of the posterior abdominal wall it is more sensitive in the posterior abdominal wall and what are all the skin creases that we are able to see on the anterior abdominal wall the first thing is the midline furrows or groove i'm going to write it down a we are going to see the midline furrows don't worry i'll show you the second thing we are going to see is the linear semilunaris third thing transverse furrows fourth thing is the line of venus and the fifth thing is the linear gravitarum we are going to see them this is the abdomen So, coming to the uh, skin incisions. So, this is the linear gravidarum. It will be like this around the hypogastric region. These are nothing but as the linear gravidarum. And the line of venous is somewhat like this, semilunar. This is the line of venous. And we have some transverse furrows like this. And this one's the center one is the linear semilunaris. And we have some midline for us. So these are all the transverse skin creases on the anterior abdominal wall. The next thing that we are going to discuss about is about the superficial fascia. Coming to superficial fascia. The superficial con fascia contains very little amou amount of fat and it has two layers. One is the superficial fatty layer. Fatty layer. This is called as the camper's fascia. Camper's fascia. The other thing is the membranous layer. Membranous layer. This is called as the scarpa's fascia. So the superficial fascia contains variable amount of fat and it has two layers, fatty layer and the membranous layer. Coming to the camper, camper's fascia, it is also called as the superficial fatty layer and it is devoid of fat on the penis. On the penis, it is devoid of fat. There is no fat. So on the penis, this layer is called as the buck's fascia. That is one thing that you need to remember, Buck's fascia on the penis, which is nothing but as a camper's fascia, but it is devoid of fat, so it is called as the Buck's fascia. So the scarpus fascia is a deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia and it is made up of elastic type of fibrous tissue, made up of elastic type of fibrous tissue. So these are the two layers of the superficial fascia. Now we are going to discuss about the cutaneous nerves of the anterior abdominal wall. Cutaneous nerves. So the skin of the anterior abdominal wall is almost entirely supplied by the lower six thoracic nerves from the T7 to T12. So how are they supplying? This is the abdominal wall. The lower end of the costal margin, zephyr process, anterior superior relax point to the pubic tubercle. This is the lower end of the abdomen, and we have T7 supplying here, T8, T9, near the umbilicus, we have T10, T11, and T12. T11, T12, so this is the T8, T9, T10, T11, and the so these are the six cutaneous nerves that are supplying the anterior abdominal wall. Coming to cutaneous arteries.
so what are the cutaneous arteries that are supplying the anterior abdominal wall the first thing is the the anterior cutaneous arteries are branches of the superior and inferior epigastric arteries we have the superior and inferior epigastric arteries branches will supply and also the lateral cutaneous arteries branches of the posterior intercostal arteries posterior intercostal arteries and then the three superficial inguinal arteries which are the branches of femoral artery branches of femoral artery so these are all the arteries that are supplying the cutaneous innervation of the anterior abdominal wall coming to cutaneous veins veins of the anterior abdominal wall i am drawing the abdomen so this is the abdomen and how are the veins directing we have axillary vein here right on the arm so we have a few branches here on either side and then we have the great saphenous vein below the thigh near the thigh so those branches will come like this so this is the axillary vein we have the branches of the axillary vein which are the lateral thoracic veins lateral thoracic veins and then we have the great saphenous vein great saphenous vein and its branches which are nothing but as the superficial epigastric veins so these are the cutaneous veins that are draining the anterior abdominal wall coming to the cutaneous lymph vessels that are draining the anterior abdominal wall so what are the cutaneous lymph vessels drink this down abdominal wall so at the level of the umbilicus this is the trans umbilical line we have above the umbilicus and the below the umbilicus the limb from the skin of the abdominal wall is drained into axillary and superficial inguinal lymph nodes one above the umbilicus and one below the umbilicus above the umbilicus they drain into the axillary lymph nodes below the umbilicus they drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes these are the superficial inguinal lymph nodes these are the axillary lymph nodes so this is about the cutaneous lymph vessels so thank you guys thanks for watching till the end if you like the video make sure to subscribe and comment and please check out our other videos on the anatomy thank you so much